Hello, Sooner football fans, and welcome to part three of our podcast with Tattoo Baker. In this episode, we talk coaching, and Lincoln Riley as the head coach of the University of Oklahoma, been handed the keys of the kingdom, and what if Josh Heupel was the coach? One thing's for sure is we would have no Tattoo Baker. Remember, once again, Sooner football fans is not affiliated with the University of Oklahoma, but we do have eligibility left. Boom up. I'm not, I'm not, again, I'm not bashing him, but Lincoln Riley. Okay. Is he truly the guy for the job? I think he is. Okay. I mean, he, but you know, you hand a guy a million dollars and tell him don't lose any. That's kind of easy to do, which is what Bob did. Bob gave him the reins to my whole thing has been, yeah, we, as Sooner fans, we want to win now, regardless of who's there. We got to win now, but I'm more concerned with, you know, 2020. Really? Uh, if you watch him on Twitter, how he's recruiting, I mean, he's already, he's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this last recruiting class he got this last year. I mean, John Blake could recruit. Yeah, but Blake already proved he can. Blake can <laughs> yeah, he could recruit, but Lincoln already proved he can coach. He yeah. made that off. He made Baker Baker. Like, yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the final Baker without Lincoln Riley. At the combine, they were asking Baker, uh, the scouts were, well, everything about Lincoln's offense. Like, they were yep. picking his brain. They were trying to pick that. his brain. And if you listen to any national people who talk, who cover football college football, they all think Lincoln's going to be the best coach in the country in the next five years. Yeah. He'll be the best coach ever, like, in the country, period. They all love he's him. Gonna, he's going to, un, you know, unthrone. Well, he'll probably be retired by then five years. Saban. Saban's are like, 72 years old. So, I mean. Saban's going to coach until they put him in the he's ground. The yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that, it, it, listen to anyone that, that covers foot, college football, they think Lincoln, for how smart he is and how young he is and how he gets everything, the next five years. He's gonna be best, one of the best coaches. That's in the what I'm. Ho- I'm just. Best. I'm just throwing it out there. I can't really see that. I mean, like I said, at the last year, before last year, maybe. But you see how he's already recruited. You see how he coached as a head coach. He took chances. I mean, he. I mean, you saw, and the players love him. Like everyone loves him. So I mean, I would say until last year, last day he proved it. Last year, I thought, and then he's already got better recruiting classes. Bob has the last like three years. Like he's recruiting better than Bob has been doing. So, yeah. I will say it's a good question. It really was, but it was a perfect storm with, you know, with Bob leaving and taking Lincoln on and then Baker being this last year and not really, not saying that it was on a mission to make the playoff, but he said that he came back to play for Bob for another championship yeah. and just, God, it was just so much like backs against the wall type of thing. And then which was with recruiting, like catching fire, like, you know, following it on Twitter was just, well, was, I mean, a I, sight. Th- this is just me. Okay. You really think about it, Bob. Bob orchestrated this very well because he knew that if he resigned after the end of last year, not that nobody, you know, there was bad feelings or anything else, but that gave coaches time to find other jobs. You know what? I don't want to work. You know, I came here to work for Bob in Oklahoma. Not saying that happened, but he did it, what, in June? Yeah, mid-June. Yeah, mid-June. There's nobody – that's a bad time to find a job as a college football coach. They just finished the palace, you know, the the Switzer Center and all that. Who, you know, for the love of God, who can't recruit bringing an eighteen year old kid into into that building? You know what I mean? Yeah, fingerprints. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> great. But I mean, it, it was almost like Bob went. He's got everything, and I, I he thinks he's the man for the job. But I think he orchestrated it because you know when there's changes, I don't care who you put in there. When there's changes, there's going to guy be guys. Well, I mean, look, uh, Schmitty left. He's the only one who's left mm-hmm. so far. But, you know, they pay, they're paying him a ton of money. But who's to say that when, if he had done it at the end of the last year, that all those coaches would have went, you know what? No, you know, I came here to work for Bob. Well, now they they get their taste of Lincoln. They go to the semifinals. They win the Big 12 again. And they go, okay, you know, this is a good deal. We got a good thing going. But I think if he'd have done it earlier, it may have been a completely different story when, than what it was. Another thing too is like you said, you think maybe Bob might have done that, spoon fed, but maybe Bob did that too because may things might owe Lincoln that job because Bob was on the hot seat a little bit before Lincoln came because that offense was terrible. Yeah, we couldn't do any. Like our offense was bad as our defense was, and Bob was actually was getting like on the hot seat a little bit before that happened, and then Lincoln came in, changed well, the whole culture like that. I think that Bob's initial plan was uh, uh, Josh Eiple. I mean, when they put him. I think he was the heir apparent to the so University of Oklahoma. So they wanted to, yeah. 
There's, I think there's no tattoo. <laughs> if, if we have Josh Heupel. Yeah. Lincoln comes in and has Baker come in with him. Mm-hmm. There's no, there's no, right. man, you know. But I mean, I think that was the initial plan. You know, they put, you know, that he came up through the ranks. You know, he was the golden boy of 2000. He went to Arizona and coached the quarterbacks. Quarterbacks coach got moved in, and and you know, I don't know what our offense was just anemic under him. And Bob had to, you know, you know that had to be a hard conversation. You know, just. Hey, it didn't work out, but I think he was the heir apparent, and then he brought in the second heir apparent. So let's talk. Let's talk some more about Lincoln because I want to address something that Caleb said. <clears throat> Lincoln did come in, and and we didn't miss a beat. I mean, we just kept on cruising. But let's be clear, he was not given the keys to mom and dad's old station wagon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. am I right? Yeah. He was given the keys to a Ferrari or, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so I mean, that helps. But before a season, though, like. I don't think many people picked pick them to go to playoffs. I think everyone thought they were going to lose to Ohio State. And when that game right there happened, oh, yeah. he, how he outcoached, he outcoached uh, Urban Meyer, who's arguably the best, best coach in the country. He outcoached him that game. No, he's not. Arguably. <laughs> but he's, 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 one, he's one of few coaches He's one of few coaches that actually has Saban's number. He's, he's beat Saban multiple times. How many coaches have done that? So I, that's why. I will say I, li- I like that, you know, with him being the one of the best coaches in, in the nation. But – his Achilles heel, Ohio State's Achilles heel, was their quarterback. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have a guy that is figured out with all he can do is run and then mediocre <laughs> throws. I've been saying it the whole year that if we had, if he had an arm, if he had a Baker Mayfield arm, there is no like he's in the discussion for winning the Heisman. Yeah, because he had a defense. He had and playing in the Big Ten, people would have fell in love with Ohio State. With their quarterback, yeah. I swear. Well, apparently they have a freshman last year who, I guess, every day of practice about play him, and like the half the team was split. They wanted him to play, but Urban Meyer just didn't want to give up his starting quarterback senior's job because he kept winning. She's a guy behind him. Apparently, is like a monster. On on Sirius XM, uh, ESPNU, there was a few callers. I remember they were like, "I love JT, but if he don't start picking it up, I gotta switch. We gotta switch." Um, yeah, Luckily, they didn't because they end up beating USC in the what was it bowl? I didn't want to see Ohio State in the playoffs. So not the, playing not, up, not in the playoff bowl. Was it not in the playoff? Well, they, they beat them in the I think Fiesta Bowl or something. No, but, no, but the but the bowl's called not in the playoff bowl, right? Yeah, not in yeah. the playoff bowl. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was happy that we didn't play that. Kind of like Texas kind of, is in the the really not in the playoff. Oh, wait, they're bowl. back. They're always back. We Texas is back. No, the Kansas Bowl, the, the moral <laughs> victories bowl. Yeah. <laughs> well, then Herman's just so with her strutting around because he's beating. Yeah, that's that's our next topic. <laughs> Texas football. Here it comes. <laughs> that's it for part three of our podcast with tattoo baker as you can tell we're going to get into a little texas football in the final podcast but if you're a sooner fan and you'd like to be on the sooner football fans podcast private message us on twitter at sooner fp fans or send us an email hosts at soonerfootballfans.com. boomer <laughs>